All right, we need to talk about this Simon Cow problem. This dude is a judge on some reality TV shows, and he thinks he can just pop into any animated world without any kind of consequence. Somebody needs to do something about this ASAP. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome back to Your Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Steyer. If you're new around here on Yen, we pull from every corner of nerd culture and talk about anything and everything that piques my interest. I love Scooby-Doo. I always have. This isn't even the first time I've talked about Scooby-Doo on this show. So instead of profounding my love for this franchise and that cute little puppy dog, I'm just going to say that I was super excited for Scoob to come out. I knew about this film way before most people did, and now that I've seen it, I've just got to say that I'm extremely disappointed in it. Everything about it. I'm, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm upset. So let's talk about it. In a world destroyed by evil. If you don't know anything about it, 2020 Scoob is the newest feature length film in the Scooby-Doo franchise. Not only does it attempt to be a new origin story to these characters, but it also seems to be Warner Brothers' attempt at creating a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe. For as long as I can remember, I've loved the crap out of these old Hanna-Barbera cartoons. And so when I heard that Warner Brothers was going to do a cinematic universe, I was pretty stoked. Why not, I thought. Everybody else is doing the cinematic universe thing. I mean, I guess only Marvel has done it right, but surely Warner Brothers can't screw this up. Like brunch. Like, what is brunch? You wait in line for an hour for essentially lunch. I mean... Oh. I should have seen the red flags. The real man under the mask was capitalism the whole time! But here we are. Scooby-Doo franchise, it's been rebooted many times over the years. This time, it's very clear that they both want to pander to nostalgia and kids. I'm not saying that Scoob needed to be for adults, but when one of your jokes in your film is Dick Dastardly continuously saying his name is Dick. I'm a dick with a D. Rick with a D. Duh, 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 dick. Well, 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 Rick. Dick, dick, dick! The only people that this is funny for is your six-year-old brother chuckling because he know he can't say the word dick, but he can laugh at it because it's a no-no word. Anyways, Scoop starts out fine. I actually like the first 10 minutes or so of this film. We have a younger Shaggy who's very lonely and he wants to have a friend. He finds a stray dog and names him Scooby Dooby Doo. And on Halloween, they befriend Daphne, Fred, and Velma where they end up solving their first mystery together. We even get a little homage to the original Scooby Doo title sequence. It's cute, it's wholesome, I kinda love it. And then we get a time skip. It's at this point, the movie goes to sh The gang are much older now, and they decide to start making some money moves by solving big boy mysteries. I thought that this was a pretty clever way to reintroduce the Scooby gang to a new audience, make them entrepreneurs that kids need to look up to, maybe they do some TikTok videos to promote their mystery incorporated sh Maybe let them have their own YouTube channel and be like, Yo, subscribe to Mystery Inc. We solve the mysteries so you don't have to. But then Velma decides that they need investors. And uh, who is this first investor? None other than Simon Cowell. Apparently, he wants to invest in Mystery Inc. But he'll only do it if Scooby and Shaggy are not a part of the gang. So instead of just saying no to Simon, because there are other investors out there, social media exists, they could have easily become influencers and make money that way to fund their business. Daphne, Fred, and Velma just sit there and do nothing. So this reasonably makes Scooby and Shaggy really sad, which unreasonably makes them go bowling. And then some robots come out of the bowling pins in the bowling alley. And then they're abducted by an alien spaceship, which happens to be the ship of another famous Hanna-Barbera character, the Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt. That's when we find out that the original Blue Falcon, he died. No, I'm just kidding. He's actually just retired. Uh, but taking his place is the lazy millennial son, Brian. Brian also dabs. I feel like I should emphasize the fact that Brian, as the Blue Falcon, dabs in this movie to the song, All I Do Is Win. A song that has not been relevant for at least five years, possibly even longer. 
Anyways, it's at this point that this movie that should be about solving mysteries is now a superhero movie. If there's anything I've been trying to get away from as of late, it's superhero media. Also cops, but superhero media. As the film goes on, the plot starts to revolve around Dick Dastardly from the Wacky Races, who wants to kidnap Scooby-Doo to open up the literal gates of hell because Scoob is a descendant from Alexander the Great's dog and opening up the gates will give Dick access to a bunch of treasure. I feel like this plot could work, but... Oh, hold on. There's somebody at my door. wonder who this could be. Yeah, bro, I got a delivery. I got a 58 ounce, 54 ounce bag of Mike and Ike's. This is now a Mike and Ike review. Are you an everyday nerd? This is the Mike and Ike Mega Mix. Chewy assorted flavor. You got Caribbean Punch, Strawberry Banana, Paradise Punch, Grape Soda, Kiwi Banana, and a bunch of others. I don't feel like reading them. Let's try it. Let's just get on in there. Try the Mike and Ike's. There's a bunch of Mike and Ike. Anyways, what was I saying? Um, Scoob is back. I feel like there's elements of a good Scooby-Doo movie here, but then every other minute, something would just happen in the film that just had me scratching my head. In the Halloween scene where Shaggy and Scooby meet the rest of the gang for the first time, there's multiple references to other Warner Brothers properties. Cool Wonder Woman costume. And are you Harry Potter? It makes about as little sense as me opening a Mike and Ike bag in the middle of this video. The soundtrack in this film is so off kilter. It was done by Junkie XL, the composer to the Deadpool and Sonic the Hedgehog movies. So I was really confused at what I was hearing most of the time. It's filled with these trap inspired instrumentals. Like the score itself is hip hop backing tracks for like Future or Migos but it's happening while Scooby-Doo characters are doing things and it's super confusing. A major complaint that this film is getting is its voice acting. The voice actor for Shaggy doesn't even sound like the traditional Shaggy. What's unfortunate about this is that Matthew Lillard, who played Shaggy in the live action movies and even voice acted him in some of the animated versions, he wanted to be in this movie, but was never even asked. The same can be said for the voice actors for Daphne. She was never asked. And I'm sure if you looked into it, it probably could be said for the rest of the characters too. At least Scooby-Doo is voiced by Frank Welker. I guess they decided not to take a risk there. But as far as the rest of the voices, I can't say too much about them because Daphne, Velma, and Fred aren't even in the movie that much. For a film that's supposed to be about Mystery Inc. growing up, there sure is a lack of Mystery Inc. in this film. We also get another Hanna-Barbera character with Captain Caveman, who is voiced by Tracy Morgan. And again, this is just another weird casting choice because he doesn't sound anything like the original. And I, I don't want to devolve into, oh no, this movie isn't anything like the old ones because that's bad criticism in and of itself. What I'm getting at is that we have a film here that is pandering to nostalgia. They obviously want old fans of Hanna-Barbera properties to go watch this movie, but they're also making so many changes to make the film more marketable to children. So we've got these celebrity voice actors, we've got this trap filled soundtrack, we got some childish humor, but these two things clashing against each other just creates this cacophony of confusion for everyone involved. Making modern versions of these characters is cool. I love the aesthetic of the Scooby-Doo Apocalypse comic. I loved when Cartoon Network created more modern versions of old Hanna-Barbera songs in the 2000s. They don't need to keep everything like the original in order for me to enjoy this movie, but then why also include an homage from the original cartoon and that like it's gonna be super similar to the original. It just didn't make any sense to me. I feel like the first 15 minutes of this film is a complete bait and switch compared to the rest of the movie. On top of all of this, like the visual presentation of Scoob is flat and uninteresting. Most of the character models are very shiny and toy-like. The backgrounds are all bland and lack details. There's just so many questions I have for the executives who so clearly made the big creative choices for this film and it just makes me once again disappointed. So should you watch Scoob? Like, if you're at all interested in seeing what a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe could look like, 
I guess you could watch this, but unless you just really want to see updated versions of these characters, or if you have children, I just don't see many people that watch Your Everyday Nerd being interested in this movie. My favorite part of Scoob is when the movie is over. Oh, well, I know, the movie over, huh? But no, there's actually a credit scene with more of the Hanna-Barbera characters. It's super stylized, and I'm like, why couldn't we get that film? So should you eat Mike and Ike's? Absolutely. They're really good. This video is not sponsored by Mike and Ike's, but go get Mike and Ike's next time you go to Walmart. Or buy a 54 ounce bag on Amazon and pretend like it just got delivered in the middle of the video. Whoa! Immersion broke. That's how I felt watching Scoob. But anyways, that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If for a reason you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments. What are your thoughts on Scoob? Did you like it? Did you hate it like me? Were you disappointed? Again, like me. If so, I want to know your thoughts because I'm very curious to see what other people think about this movie. It's so bizarre. I can't believe I waited so long to see this. In the meantime, we are so close to getting 1,000 subscribers on the channel. So if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and consider it. Please, subscribe button right there, baby. All you gotta do is hit it. It's just got just a little, just a little click right there if you haven't already. But again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode of Your Everyday Nerd. Goodbye.